President Trump is leaving the door open for more stimulus talks with Democrats after acting on his own to help Americans pay their bills. We've had it. And we're going to save American jobs and provide relief to the American workers that I'll be signing. The executive actions he signed on Saturday include federal unemployment benefits of $400 a week if states pay part of that cost. That's lower than the $600 weekly check that some 30 million Americans collected until the program expired last month. The president also acted to defer the payroll tax for most working Americans. He will look at halting evictions and foreclosures and plans to extend federal student loan relief. House Speaker Nancy Pelosi says the president's moves are not enough and probably are not legal. So the president's uh, meager, weak and, um, and unconstitutional actions further demand that we have an agreement. Speaker Pelosi and other top Democrats want to revive talks with Republicans that failed on Friday. At this time, no new talks are scheduled. For more on the president's executive action, we're joined by Chief Washington Correspondent Major Garrett. He's also the host of The Takeout and The Debrief podcasts. Major, good morning. We just heard Nancy Pelosi, but the pushback has actually been bipartisan. Uh, Republican Senator sure. Ben Sasse of uh, Nebraska uh, uh, called the executive order's unconstitutional slop. So what is the president actually yeah. trying to accomplish here? Look, the president loves headlines, declarations, and the appearance of action. So what his supporters hear is Congress is stuck, there's an impasse, the president acted. That's the headline, that's the declaration you'll hear from the White House all this week. Congress didn't move and the president did. The problem for the White House is most of these interventions are complicated, some are unworkable, many could be challenged in court. So if the president wants to sort of shock the system and get negotiations up and running again, this isn't much voltage. It's kind of like static electricity, <laughs> memorably for a moment, you remember it, but it's mostly annoying and doesn't really solve the problem. Yeah, and well, does he actually have the power to do this? In some cases, he does. This move on payroll taxes resembles, it's not exact, but it resembles something that President Obama did during the Great Recession. So there is some legal authority there, but it is unclear if businesses will follow this because they want to know that they can actually withhold these payroll taxes if they do, people's paychecks will be slightly more generous. But on the other things, with evictions, college age, most of those things are memorandums, intentions from the president. Right. No real legislative language. Everyone in Washington knows if you want to solve these problems, you have to legislate, not send executive memos. Because a lot of people are feeling kind of desperate right now, Major, with, with some of this due to expire. I mean, how much help is actually in here for people? Well, let's look at the unemployment benefits. It is dependent on states finding the revenue to supplement what the federal government is going to provide. The federal government will provide that, by the way, by taking money away, billions of dollars from disaster relief assistance. So if there's more hurricanes, which the National Weather Service predicts we will have, or wildfires, that's going to be depleted. So that's a problem. And states right now, all of them, are financially strapped. Why? Because the lockdowns have depleted their revenue stores. So even if the president is successful, it will be required for states to step in and assist him. Many can't do that. That is one of the very reasons this is problematic and probably won't provide the aid on unemployment benefits Americans need right now. You say any long-lasting relief will have to come from Congress. What's the prospect of that now, Major, given their differences? Congressional Democrats see this as action, and they know the president will grab and did grab some headlines. They need to re-engage with the White House. The White House also knows this is not sufficient to, met, to meet the economic test that the pandemic continues to press for the country. So negotiations will likely resume. Congress has not res uh, uh, gone on recess for the summer, as it typically does. Lawmakers are waiting for resolution. And specifically, Senate Republicans up for re-election need something to vote for. Mm -hmm. By acting with executive memoranda, the president is leaving them in the cold. They need a deal as much as the White House does. You'll see pressure from Senate Republicans to restart talks.